Hi, I'm Gunny St. John. I go to Murray State University in Kentucky, and I have been working with Aditya Togi, who's a graduate student here, and Dr. Witt. And our project is the density distribution in interstellar cloud Barnard 207. And this is a wide field image of the Taurus region. And our image is right here in the center of the screen, um, our object. And down in the right hand corner is the Pleiades cluster, in case you've heard of that. And so we're looking at this cloud, and here's an up close image. This image was created by Aditya from the data he received from the Discovery Channel telescope. And it, um, you can see the structure of our cloud based on the stars that are illuminating it in the image. And you can see that right here there's a, a dark core. And this cloud's interesting because we have a single star forming in it. And it's, um, it's not forming at the center of that core. And we don't know why, and so we're kind of investigating that. And it's also interesting because there's only one star, and we can study the basics of the single star formation. Um, unlike Orion, there's thousands of stars forming. You know, it's kind of hard to get down to the nitty gritty basic details. Uh, that image was created with the data from the Discovery Channel Telescope which is located in Happy Jack, Arizona, and it is the newest telescope out there. And it's a 4.3 meter telescope, which you can see on the bottom right hand picture, and there's a person down the very bottom right so you can see in comparison for size. Um, and it is the best of its kind right now. It has a single large CCD, which it creates an image of about 12 and a half arc minutes across, which is what our image is. And it's very useful because it's a single image and there's not overlapping CCDs and so you get a very clean and pretty picture. And there's four institutions that are related to this telescope, the University of Toledo being one, the Lowell Observato Observatory, which is in Arizona, and University of Maryland and Boston University. And it was just dedicated last year. My role, um, since we're just getting started with doing all the data and everything, is to start measuring extinction so we can start determining the density of this cloud. Um, and in order to do so, we use our data from different bands of uh, uh, different images taken at different bands um, of wavelength. So we have B, V, R, and I images right now, which correspond to those different wavelengths. And later this year, they plan on getting the U band. Um, so there's three different ways to measure extinction. and um, the first one is surface brightness, which is just the luminosity of the cloud. And you can see by my four graphs over there that I've made, uh, it goes up and down in accordance with the cloud. So we took one strip directly across the center of the cloud, which I can show you. So it goes straight across from all the way over here. So that would be included our star in there. And you can see um, the outer side is just, just the sky flat and then it goes up as soon as you get to the edge of the cloud, back down to the core, and then the, the large peak, which is right here, is our star. And you can see that it's not inside the core region. So that again, it tells you that the star is not forming in the middle. Um, the next one that we're, along with the surface brightness, um, is it correlates directly to optical depth, which is how far you can see into the cloud. And uh, you can see in this optical image in the R band that there's different levels of surface brightness, which these isophotes make. And in the red image on the right, it's in the near infrared. And you can see that those outer layers aren't there anymore. But you can still see that the, co the core, um, there's still light being scattered. So you can tell it's a very dense core. And even in that image, there's one to two magnitudes of extinction. So then you can calculate and kind of come up with our cloud is at a density of about Ten to, on the order of 10 to the 5. <coughs> the next method is color excess, and we're using B, V, and I bands to measure the, the color excess of stars within the cloud, and these arrows represent reddening vectors. So the dust particles um, will redden the color of the stars, and so um, 
when we plot our stars, we're working on this one right now, so it's not complete. Um, when you plot the stars that we do the photometry on, it, uh, you can use our red moon vectors to trace it back to what color it would really be. And one arrow represents one order of extinction. The third method is star count, which is just the number of stars per unit area, which is about a square degree. And you measure stars in the sky region, which is the comparison field, and then within the cloud, which is the obscured region. And the difference A um, would be how much extinction there is. So that's what I'm working on, and um, there's more to be done after I leave, obviously, and they will be getting the UVAND image, and they'll also be working with Dan Clemens from Boston University to obtain um, data so they can look at the polarization inside the cloud. Any questions for Demi? So I'm not in stuff, so bear with me. Okay. Why, is there a reason why there's only one star in that cloud? Or is it just you happen to find one? Or? Um, there's just one star forming, and we know that from other infrared images that we've looked at, longer wavelengths, and so that we can only see. Um, but I mean, most you said most clouds have tons of stars in them. Well, it's just, so it's is there like something special about this one? It's just it's a smaller, it, there's, no, there's not a, it's not a special cloud. Okay. Um, but it's just one of on a smaller size and in oh. that region. Okay. So are there uh, say Spitzer images available at much longer wavelengths where you can see the thermal emission from the dense glass, gas down in the center of the cloud? Because right now you're just sort of looking at extinction. So it might be useful to compare right. extinction to thermal emission. I have not personally seen any images of that, but there are no Spitzer images. They are wise images and they are IRS. Is it, um, is it pretty straightforward to tell um, how far into the cloud the star is forming? In other words, you know, uh, I'm not an astronomer either, so I might say, well, is it possible the star is forming behind the cloud? Um. How, can you, how can you tell? How much of the cloud is in front of the star and how much is behind it, for example? I'm personally not sure. Um, but we do know that it's within the cloud. I, I, I don't know. I'm sorry. <laughs> <That's specific>. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, if there's no further questions, let's thank her again.